David. Hey, how are you feeling? I'm good, Alex. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, it's been a few minutes since your fight. How's the body feeling? No, good, good. After the fight, I was a bit tired. Uh, uh, he, it was a high-paced kind of fight, um, round one especially. But I was kind of—I I predicted that, so I, it was easy to recover from. You know. You've had some time to kind of re reflect on the fight. Uh, how, how do you feel about your performance? So I, I haven't seen it yet, but like I spoke to my coaches and stuff, and you know when the adrenaline goes down a little bit, you start remembering things, and it pretty much went how I planned it. Um, except it wasn't as clean as I, I, I would have liked it to have been. Um, I knew round one he's going to come out hard and just weather that storm, and then round two and three I get him, which I did, but it just wasn't as clean. And I expected him to slow down more, but he just had so much heart. He just kept coming forward, and he really wanted it. Um, I put a lot of damage on him in round two, and uh, I thought, surely I have him in round three. Like, I was almost positive, and I was finding my range in the beginning of round three, and I went for the st stupid throws because I started, I'm like, okay, now it's time to style on him. I've got his number. And then it kind of got into like a grappling exchange. And because I'm the better grappler, I just was on top of him. I tried to go for that Rene choke, mounted him and stuff. Um, he escaped it. He's got good jiu-jitsu. You know, he has a good fight fight team, for good fight camp. He's undefeated. And uh, he, brought, he brought it, you know. What, what, was, what was some of the, the game plan? Like, were you expecting him to stand all the time? Or you, were you expecting him to shoot a, a little bit? Honestly, exactly how the fight went, that's exactly how I, I thought it would be. There was not much footage on him, but I just know, you know, uh, I know his training camp is like that, and I, and I know the fighter I am, they're all going to be trying to do that. You know, they come out hard, they're thinking they can press me against the cage, I'm going to be moving off, and then they go for this takedown, and, you know, um, but my defense was good t today, and, uh, and I think my grappling surprised him. I didn't think he expected my grappling to be that good. That first round, um, probably the most adversity you've had to face this, thus far in the UFC. Um, yeah. I guess just what was going on through your mind? Like, like you said, you knew it was coming, but when when it, when it was happening, just yeah. Um, like I said, yeah, I, I knew it was coming, and when it was happening, I was like, all right, this is exactly what we expected. But he was just a little bit stronger and faster, and and he lasted. The thing was, he lasted a bit longer than I thought he would have. And that's what surprised me, you know, and that's why it got a little bit messy in there. Because all the others, I, I kind of expected. I knew it, you know, you kind of get into the fight, you feel it for the first couple of minutes. Um, but he just lasted the whole, like, five minutes. He was pushing that same type of pace. And then he kind of got this, like, cheeky, like, little... I wouldn't even say it was a full takedown, but it kind of got me to the floor. And I was like, you know how these judges are nowadays? I'm like, oh, maybe they're scoring this round for him, you know? Then it kind of made me get a little bit... Uh, overzealous and stuff, you know, to, 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 to really steal the round, you know? Because, again, I, you're not just fighting against the, the ref and... No, sorry, not the ref. You're not just fighting against the uh, the opponent. You're fighting against the judges nowadays, too. Um, during weigh-ins, he did the little gun thing. I saw that you did it back to him at, yeah. at, at some point. Was that just kind of mind mind games? Yeah, so, like, I, I hope people don't take that out of context is... He did it to me at the weigh-in, but I'm like, all right, you doing your talking at the weigh-ins, I'll do my talking in the fight. And then after round two, like I said, I thought I was going to finish in round three, and that's when I did the gun. Like, okay, you're, you're done now. You're dead. This is where I do my talking, you know? Uh, called out Chris Gutierrez, but you basically said any of the top 15, you're, you're down to fight. Um, what, uh, you know, do you think the, the body feels good enough to turn him back around and fight in London, or are you looking a little bit past that? Uh, it's too early to say. Because um, I, I just got done with the, with the fight. You know, most of the times you feel this stuff after the fight. You know, I don't even know what's wrong with me at the moment. That's why they give you those 30 days, you know, um, to, to claim whatever you got. Because right now, the first week, you're not going to feel nothing. And then week two, you get back into training. You're going to be like, what the hell? What, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? I didn't have this before. Um, but yeah, so we'll see it there. We'll see it then. Right now, I just want to focus on my brother, Farid. He's fighting. He's got a big fight coming up. And inshallah, he'll be victorious too. Awesome. And finally for me, uh, Extreme Couture, so you, you, you kicked off the, uh, the, the team and uh, now you got your teammates fighting next. Uh, I guess just how does that feel to start the night off with the win? Yeah, good. You know, I, I always like being the front runner, you know, like I, I, uh, I take pride in that. Um, also for my team, BKMMA too, you know, they had a great year last year too with Dewey Cooper, 24 on one. Uh, we started off the year for Extreme Control and BKMMA, you know, 1-0 now. Awesome. Congrats.
Take it right. Uh, Umar was just in here, and he said when he was coming up and looking impressive, it was hard for him to get fights in the top 15 because mm -hmm. the risk might not outweigh the reward. So yeah. do you think it will be hard for you to get fights if you keep winning like this? It's been a hard. That's why I've been taking out all these these tough guys. These tough. I didn't need to take this Mateos fight. Like he was a, on paper, he's a step down gravely. No, what do you guys think? He's he, like he's. This is a debut guy. Gravely's been in the. In the UFC, you know, um, he's had great fights. He's um, D1 wrestler, whatever. Even uh, Trevin, he, he had a better name than this guy. Um, and not that this guy wasn't good, but just on paper, you know, is what I'm saying. This is his debut. And um, it's because I've been getting ducked, you know. So that's why I was like, all right, let me take this fight. For me, it's about my progression. It's not about the name I, I take out. But now we need to start getting serious. I need to get ranked. If, my, if I'm not ranked after this fight... Let me get a rank, guy, so I can show my worth, you know? Are there any names in the top 15 that have turned down fights against you? No, I'm, I don't... You know what it is? It's not even about turning down the fights. Maybe there are, but it's, it's not in particular turning down the fights. It's like they take no notice in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So it's like that's just as not getting a fight either, you know, because I'm there beating out everybody outside the top 15, and then when it's my time to, to get mine... They don't want, they don't want, but I get it. In the UFC, this is how it works too. Nobody wants to, if you're higher ranked, they don't want to fight low, you know, because they don't want to lose their rankings. So it is what it is. <laughs> Over here. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, the strategy going into this fight, uh, playing somebody that's undefeated, was your strategy wait for him to fade, to be overcommitted, take him down, just wear on him, or did it just uh, play out like that? Um, so what was the, like, the question? Um, yeah, so uh, was the strategy going into this fight, uh, especially him being undefeated, wait for him to fade? Uh, if he overcommits, uh, take him down to the deck. Uh, what was the strategy going into this fight, or did it just yeah. play out like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of played out how, how we wanted it to play out. Um, but like I said, not as clean. Um, usually I am a little bit cleaner than that, but he brought it, you know, so I've got to give him credit. But it was basically, he's going to come out hard, Gonna kind of blow his load, and uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna find find my uh, shots where I need to, and uh, then I'm gonna start picking up after the two and a half minute mark, you know. But this guy for five minutes he just sprang and ran at me, you know. And then the, the round was kind of getting close, so then I had to kind of get a bit chaotic too because I was like, okay, I need to steal the round, you know, because I didn't want the judges to. You don't want to go around down, you know, and there's only three rounds, so if you go around down, it's like the round two. If it's 50-50, that's it. You've, you probably lost the fight, you know? Got it. And being undefeated, if you can look at yourself right now, would you say that you're ready for the title shot maybe uh, this year or uh, beginning of next year? I think pot potentially, skill-wise, skill yes, I can be ready. Uh, will I get it due to politics and that? Or probably not. I'm still not even in the top 15, so how am I going get, to get that, you know? But progressively, like for my own, I think I'll be closing down on that for sure. Got it. All right, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, brother.